Welcome, I am Pascal van Dort, working at Rockfon as Global Acoustics Ambassador. It is my passion to help architects, interior designers and building owners to understand the importance of sound, noise and acoustics and what impact it can have on people's health, happiness and well-being. Together with my educational background in building acoustics, I developed an expertise in creating spaces that sounds beautiful to everyone. Dining out isn't just about the food, it's an experience for all the senses. If you have ever left a restaurant irritated or exhausted, you may be aware that one of your senses plays a big role in the experience, your hearing. Most restaurants have a serious noise problem that is affecting customers and staff and therefore the business, but it also can have a huge impact on our health. Exposure to unwanted noise can cause increased heart rate, hearing loss, cardiovascular disease and stress. Here you see an overview of different sound and noise levels and their relationship to health. Listening to me talking on one meter distance is still healthy, but playing the trumpet with you listening at the same distance will most likely cause hearing damage. Because getting hearing damage depends on how long you are exposed to these noise levels. For example, after being one hour in a noisy environment of 94 decibels, your hearing could be damaged. Several studies have been done, and unfortunately an average noise level of 94 decibels is no exception in restaurants. And not only the guests, but also the people working in restaurants are exposed to these noise levels. For a long time, visitors of restaurants, cafes and bars were complaining about the service. But since a few years, the number one complaint is noise. The ones with hearing impairments dare to go even a step further. They are not talking about irritation, but discrimination. According to research, half of the visitors of a noisy restaurant remain seated, but will never come back. And just like me, it must have happened to you as well. Getting the wrong order just because of bad speech intelligibility in a noisy environment. People would visit a restaurant more often if the indoor acoustic environment would be optimized. And it seems that this optimization is a necessity, as 8 out of 10 people have problems holding a conversation. Especially when the Lombard effect occurs. And that is something you really want to avoid. So, how to improve the indoor acoustic environment? A very good example is this case study in which I was involved in myself, restaurant Calva in the Netherlands. Visitors were complaining about not being able to have a decent conversation. And some staff members were even ending up with a headache after they finished working. The floor area is 130 square meters, ceiling height is quite low, only 2.6 meters, it has an open kitchen and can have maximum 55 guests. The first thing we did to improve the indoor acoustic environment is measuring the reverberation time. How long does it take the sound level to decay 60 decibels? We measured 0.8 seconds. But is that good or bad? Researcher Jens Holger Rindel developed a method for calculating the acoustic capacity. A relationship between the reverberation time, the number of guests and the quality of verbal communication. With the reverberation time of 0.8 seconds, the maximum number of guests to hold a sufficient intelligible conversation is only 22. And why only? Because it can have up to 55 guests in the restaurant. With this number of 55 persons, we calculated back what the maximum reverberation time should be. In this case, the outcome was 0.4 seconds. With this as a starting point, we calculated how much sound absorbing materials were needed. The biggest available surface was the gypsum ceiling. Also because of the limited height, the most obvious choice was installing ceiling panels directly mounted to the gypsum. After the installation, we again measured the reverberation time. And as you can see, the average is also what we calculated. But talking to a chef or restaurant owner about the reverberation time, he or she has no clue what you're talking about. What we did is letting them experience it and hear the difference. Mm. 
sort of the situation they were in. And we told them that this is what they will get. You can even hear music now. After hearing this, they were convinced they need to take action. They installed the acoustic ceiling panels themselves and already after a few days there were no complaints or headaches anymore. There are some national standards about acoustics in restaurants, but it's just a handful and they differ a lot from each other. Requirements for reverberation times go from 0.3 to 1.2 seconds. We measured six different restaurants to see how these national standards and Rindle's acoustic capacity would apply. As you can see, a diversity in sizes and in its capacity. In five of them, they had clear complaints about the acoustics or noise levels. In one, they were completely satisfied. If you would compare the measured reverberation times with the standard in Australia, only two do not meet the requirements. Compared with the class D of the Norwegian standard, it sort of looks the same. If you would compare them with class A of the Norwegian standard, then they would all be colored red. Like if you would compare them with Rindle's acoustic capacity. Also in restaurant number 6, where they had no complaints. According to Rindle's theory, the measured reverberation time in this restaurant is still way too high. In restaurant 1, the required reverberation time should be 0.2 seconds. The question is whether that is feasible. Restaurant critic from the Washington Post, Tom Sietzema, created his own noise rating system. When he must speak with a raised voice, he considers it as a loud restaurant, and that is around 70 decibels. According to Tom, restaurants with noise levels above 80 decibels are extremely loud. And that makes sense, because above 80 decibels we officially are shouting, as you can see in this ISO standard, and try to have a normal conversation when you are shouting. It looks like restaurants are only designed to be Instagrammable. Why can't they be a pleasure for all our senses, especially our hearing? And what many people don't know is that noise also affects your taste. The outcome of a research from Unilever and the University of Manchester is what you eat in a noisy environment will taste more bitter. So the background noise of restaurants also influences our perception of food. And I'm not saying that every restaurant is a disaster. Of course, there are restaurants that look and sound amazing. Like this restaurant in Belgium, where they used a very high sound absorbing suspended ceiling. Or this restaurant in Italy, where they installed a seamless ceiling with a very high sound absorption to ensure a pleasant indoor acoustic environment. So you still can have design freedom when using sound absorbing materials. But there are many things to consider when designing a restaurant, bar or café. Because a fine dining restaurant requires a different approach than a fast food restaurant with a lot of children. And also, the background music plays an important role in the soundscape of a restaurant. Then there is the space itself. What are its dimensions? What is the table setting? And don't forget about the acoustic parameters you need to take in account. The conclusion of this session is that it is difficult to define clear acoustic rules for restaurants. Should we focus on the reverberation time or on Rindle's acoustic capacity? I think, first of all, it is important that we increase awareness about the importance of acoustics to restaurant success. Especially among architects, interior designers and restaurant owners. Let's see if they are willing to put interior acoustics on the menu of restaurants. I want to thank you very much for your time and attention, and let's continue creating a world that sounds good to everyone.